The Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. This week, we're going to pick up where we left off last week uh, when we were talking about the name of Jesus and that we have access to the name of Jesus. Now, this is a message that was recorded at Faith and Victory Church in Greensboro, North Carolina, and this is the second half of that message, so let's go into it right now. This whole study all for me was hearing that a Christian group was going to drop Christ from their name. Well, that opposition to the name has existed for a long time. In Acts chapter 4, verse 18, it says, And they called them, talking about, you know, the apostles and the ministers there, called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Now, they didn't say anything about not teaching in the name of Gamaliel, not teaching in the name of Muhammad, you know, whoever. <laughs> no, they said specifically in the name of Jesus. There was something about that name. I saw I love that song. There's something about that name. Something about that name was getting under their skin here. Acts 5, let's look at that, verse 40. And to him they agreed, and when they called the apostles and beat them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Well, again, why specifically say don't speak in the name of Jesus? Because they knew that's where the power was. They knew that if they were going to stop the spread of this teaching that they hated so much, they needed to stop the people who had the teaching from speaking in the name of Jesus. Otherwise, it was going to be unstoppable. And guess what? It was. Hallelujah. Acts 15, verse 26. Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. These people gave their lives put their lives in hazard for the name. Now this is, this is how serious we got to get about the name of Jesus. We've got to come to the point that we stand for the name of Jesus. We make a bold stand on his name. We don't let anybody tell us we can't use the name. You know, if they invite, and I'll tell you, tell you this right now, there's folks know I'm a minister where I work. And if they invite me to pray, they had better know I will pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay? And, you know, I don't pull punches. If they ask me to pray, I don't care if it's praying over a meal that we're going to have there. They ask me to pray, I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus, and I just let her go. Hallelujah. Well, that's the way we need to be. Amen. There's, no, there's no shame. There's no... Oh, well, I've got, to be, I've got to be politically correct and understanding here and know that maybe this will offend some, you know, because I know there's a guy in our department that's, that's Jewish. Uh, there, there are people, <laughs> hey, there are people in our department that are all kinds of things. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. But at any rate, uh, the thing is, there's all kinds of folks that in the natural I know would be offended. Now, praise the Lord, I, I'm excited for the brother there that, that, uh, that is Jewish. Because, you know, amen, I, I, the Jews, we're for the Jews, praise God. Amen. And we bless the Jewish people. Yes, amen. amen. And we're called upon to bless the Jewish people and to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So, uh, man, I'm all for him. Hallelujah. But, you know, if he were in a situation where he was going to be offended because of me praying in the name of Jesus, I'm sorry that's not my intent. I'm not doing it just to be mean. I'm doing it because that's where the authority is. That's where the power is. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. All right, um, Acts 9, 29. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. <laughs> well, in other words, he was getting in some serious trouble because he preached and taught in the name of Jesus. Amen? Again, we got to not back off from that name. All right, uh, let's see. I... I I did skip one little section here. Very quickly, Acts 4.10. Let's look at that. Be it known unto all you and all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, 
whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand before you whole. And again, they didn't pull any punches here. They didn't back down. Matter of fact, they made it very clear, this guy got healed because of the name. They're standing for that name. Healing is by the name. That's, that's the heading there that I put this under. Healing is by the name of Jesus. Acts 4.30 By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders might be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Amen? The signs and the wonders occurred because of the name of Jesus. I didn't want to skip that uh, over that section, but I wanted to get to the other one before I uh, went back to it. All right, the name is only available to believers. This is a key point. Let's go to Acts chapter 19. Doing a lot of work here in the book of Acts, and the reason is because in the book of Acts, we see the acts of the Holy Spirit among the apostles. I like to put it that way, and a lot of times folks see that and they'll say the acts of the apostles. Well. The apostles acting on their own couldn't have accomplished anything. Amen? So it's the acts of the Holy Ghost through the apostles is the way I like to look at it. But let's look at Acts 19, then, verse 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. So they, they understood there's power in the name of Jesus. And they said to themselves, hey, look, our profession is exorcist. We're, we're here to cast out devils. That's what we're all about. We saw all of this going on in the name of Jesus. Let's use that name. All right. So they said, all right, so we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. Preach it. Acts 19, 14. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. <laughs> Paul I know. But who are you? <laughs> in other words, in so many words, what right do you have to use the authority in the name of Jesus? You are not believers. You're not Christians. You don't have a right to the name. Now, if they were Christians and in, because they were Christians had right to the name, this demon would not argue with them. He would just exited. That would have been it. But he didn't have to because there was no authority. There was no right to use the name. The name can only be used, can only be exercised by believers. So again, it points to the fact that the name of Jesus belongs to us as believers. Not to anybody else, not to the world. So, let's keep reading. Verse 16. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Well, now that was embarrassing. All right. Now, notice what happened. In verse 17, And this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear, or respect, depending on how you want to look at it, fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And why do you think that happened? Because they understood that these guys that didn't have authority to use the name tried to use the name, and they, since they didn't have authority, it backfired on them. Well, that means the name is no less powerful, but it illustrated to these people that the right people have to be the ones using the name. And so it brought fear upon all of those who weren't <laughs> because they saw that authority. They saw that the right had to exist, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. So they realized that the power is in that name. Now. Folks, this is what we got to understand. The power is in that name. Right. We can use the name of Jesus. We are believers. We do have right. We do have authority. Now, as a matter of fact, I hadn't planned to do this. And this, this usually happens when I'm teaching. I hadn't planned to do whatever it was. And I go there anyway. Let's go to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And... Uh, Matter of fact, I'm going to close this other window I've got open here so I can see my screen. Verse 15. Jesus is, is leaving instructions before he goes to heaven uh, to his disciples. And he says unto them, Go ye. Well, who ye are ye that are going? <laughs> That's believers, isn't it? Amen. We are to go. Go ye into all the world and preach 
the gospel, gospel means good news, to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, delivered, healed, made whole, spirit, soul, body, financially, socially, delivered from every temple evil. And he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Now how are they going to do it? In the name. Now, see, we skip over that. We read it and, and say, In my name they shall cast out devils, they'll speak with new tongues, they'll take up serpents, if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. But we kind of go over that phrase there, in my name. See, you got to realize the source of the power is in the name. Now, ultimately, God's the source. Ultimately, Jesus is the source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from that. But I'm saying there's, let's put it this way. I have the right to go to the bank and sign a check and take money out of my account. I can't take it out of your account, <laughs> but I can take it out of my account, right? How do I do that? I use my name. I sign my name and that gives me authority to withdraw from the resources that are already mine. Woo. See, that's good. Amen. That'll preach. <laughs> The name of Jesus gives us the right to draw on the resources that are already ours. Amen. See, God meets our need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The riches and glory are there. Mm -hmm. We have every right to them, but we've got to sign the check. How do we sign it? In the name of Jesus. Amen. He's given us Hallelujah. power of attorney. That's how we unlock that treasure that's there, is the key of the name of Jesus. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. We've got to use the name. Now, again, looking at it here. Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel. He that believes will be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. We're them that believe. We're the believers. In Jesus name. Jesus is speaking here. So in Jesus name we are to cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up servants, drink any deadly thing, and shall not hurt them, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If I go to lay hands on the sick I better be doing it in the name of Jesus. Me just laying hands on the sick, eh. You know, I heard oh my I heard a preacher one time. Bless his heart. He's gone on to be with the Lord now, and I'm sure the Lord sat him down and said, Son, sit down a minute. <laughs> Let me straighten you out. He said one time, though, I heard him on the radio, he said, The only thing that laying on of hands does is transfer germs. <laughs> Brother, read your Bible. You know, if you don't want to believe it because I teach it, <laughs> or somebody else teaches it, just read the Bible. <laughs> Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. Well, <laughs> Transfer germs. Oh, my goodness. You know, I, I sometimes think about some of those guys because there's, there's several preachers that I used to listen to on the radio way back when I was a young Christian. And I'd hear them. And, oh, man, they were good on preaching salvation. But then they get into some of these other areas. Oh, boy. You know, get teaching about the baptism of the Holy Ghost is of the devil. <laughs> it's all of the devil. And speaking in tongues. You know, funny thing about speaking in tongues. I never heard murderers speak in tongues. You know, or, or weird cult leaders that are slaughtering people. and all. You don't hear them speaking in tongues. It's always believers that are speaking in tongues. Christians that are laying hands on folks and them getting, and getting healed. You know, it just seems to me if tongues were the devil, there'd be more of the devil's crowd doing it. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, that's me. Uh, anyway, so this guy, he would say all these things. And just, I really sometimes I think he said things like this just to get people you know, attention. And he got my attention on this. Laying hands on the sick, all it's going to do is transfer germs. You're just going to make them worse. Just going to make them worse. Just might as well leave it alone. Not far as that goes, you're probably going to get sick because you laid hands on them. And on and on and on he'd go. And I'd go, Lord. You know? So I can just imagine he gets to heaven and the Lord says, come over here, sit down. Let's put you in remedial class. <laughs> you know, we've got to straighten you out. You know that's got to be embarrassing because bless his heart. And the thing that I always think about too about these guys, there's two of them i got in mind right now. <laughs> Both of them got home to be with the Lord. Both of them I know born again. Amen, absolutely. 
But I can just imagine that they're up there in heaven going, please don't play those radio programs anymore. <laughs> just turn them off. Come on, folks. But they're still to this day playing those programs. And these guys have been dead for so many years, it's not even funny. But, praise God, you know, I mean, there are people getting born again off those programs. Hallelujah. Hopefully they get into some good word after they get born again. <laughs> anyway, I kind of digressed on that one. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. We give thanks in the name as well. Giving thanks always for all things. This is verse 20, Ephesians 5.20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks, notice, always for all things. Now, when he says give thanks always for all things, that doesn't mean you give thanks for the negative, for the evil. It's got to be coming from God. Amen. Amen. Now, what comes from God? Good things. How do we know that? Because the book of James chapter 1 says that all good things come down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. That means he doesn't change his mind. He's not wishy-washy. He doesn't bless you one minute, turn around and curse you the next. Amen. See? So we know that only good things come from the Lord. Matter of fact, here we go again. Let's go to James. I get on some of these things. I just can't get off of them. James chapter 1. And, and, you know, there are times I'd love to sit Christians down and just say, please read this, but don't read it religiously. Just read it like you're reading a newspaper or a textbook and look at what it actually is saying. Because if you do, you'd understand that half of your doctrine is squirrely. Hey, I'm just, you know, telling the truth here. Let's, go, let's look at uh, verse 13, James 1, 13. Let no man say, well now let's stop right there. <laughs> don't even say this. <laughs> Not much less don't think it. But don't even say this. Let a man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Now how many people have you heard say, God's tempting me. He's testing and trying me. Bless his holy name. Now wait a minute, don't say that. Don't say when you're tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So God wasn't behind that. You know, God's just tempting me to see how far I'll go. No, he's not. Don't even say that. So we're already kicking over some sacred cows. How's our cow doing? Oh, there she went. All right. <laughs> All right. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it's fin finished, brings forth death. Do not err, this is King James, do not err, my beloved brethren. Now let's look at how the Amplified says that. Uh, verse 16, do not be misled, my beloved brethren. That's pretty good. Uh, the God's Word translation. My brothers and sisters, don't be fooled. <laughs> so you, you see what he's saying here, all right? That's what I love about uh, Esword. I can go in here and just go to any translation that I've got and see what verse 16 says. But it says, do not err, do not make a mistake, don't be fooled, my beloved brethren. Every good gift, what kind of gift? Good gift. And every perfect, see, he's not even just talking good here. <laughs> he's done gone on perfect. And every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. Now that's God, in case you're wondering. Capital F there, Father of lights. That's at least one capitalization I agree with. <laughs> you know, there's no capitals in the original Greek. It's at the discretion of the translators. But I agree with them on this one. The Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, hear the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Slow to speak. See, don't err in what you're speaking. Speak only the word. Slow to wrath. Don't get mad quickly. 
For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. And the word soul there is suke, mind, will, and emotions. He's not talking about you being saved, because he's already talking to Christians. Right. Amen? So he's talking to Christians, they're already born again. He's talking about saving their souls, their mind, their will, their emotions. In other words, what's going to protect, preserve, save your mind, your will, and your emotions? Renewing your mind to the Word of God. Amen? All right. If any man be a hearer and not a doer, he's like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. And he beholdeth himself and goes his way and straightway forgiveth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, that's the word of God, and continueth therein, he's continuing in the word of God, he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, he's doing the word of God, this man will be blessed in his deed or in his doing of the word. Amen? All right. Uh, wow, I got off on a tangent there, but it's a good one. Hallelujah. I like good tangents. All right, giving thanks always unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's go a little further. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians three seventeen, And whatsoever you do, see we're doing the word, we just read that. Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do it all. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. So that tells me everything I do ought to be doing by the name. It also tells me if there's anything that I am going to do that I can't do in His name, <laughs> I probably ought not be doing it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, I like the, the story that Pastor tells about the guy that said, Hey, Pastor, I got this great idea, this great business. Uh, I'm going to put uh, uh, machines places that are selling cigarettes and uh, when, I, when I sell these cigarettes I'm going to make a whole bunch of money. This is great franchise they're giving me here. This is awesome. And pastor said, well let me ask you this. He's trying to think of a way to put it in such a way to kind of strike his thinking. And he says uh, I want you to picture yourself putting the cigarettes in the machine and with every pack you're putting in there say I do this in the name of Jesus. I do this in the name of Jesus. And he stopped and he thought a minute and the guy goes I can't do that, can I? <laughs> he says, no, I don't think you can. You know, here, here folks, I'm going to inflict cancer on you. I'm going to hurt you in the name of Jesus. No, I, I, I can't do that. He had to pass that one by. Well, guess what? If he passed that one by in good conscience toward God, then God had something even better for him. Amen. What appeared to him to be a blessing wasn't, but it means that God had something better for him. Praise God. So I think about that sometimes. If I'm, if I'm about to do something, say something, act on something, can I do that in the name of Jesus? You know, it's the old thing of what would Jesus do? Can I do this in his name? Amen. Got to think about these things. Do everything, it says, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then finally, we'll end up on the scripture that Brother Hagin started with in his teaching, Philippians 2.10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven, beings in heaven, beings in earth, and beings under the earth. Now here's the thing, folks. The name of Jesus, everybody's going to bow their knee. The folks that won't let preachers preach in the name, the military brilliant commanders that won't let their chaplains speak in the name, they're all going to bow the knee. Now ultimately that's going to happen. You know what? I'd rather bow my knee now voluntarily <laughs> to the name than to do it later at the uh, edge of a double-edged sword. <laughs> Amen. Because everybody's going to bow. But I'd rather bow because I'm a believer, because it's voluntary, because I have great respect for the name. So when I see things like this, and it's not just this organization. I, I'm not picking on any one particular organization that got me started on this study. But it's the attitude. It's the attitude that Christians, unfortunately, are falling into today of getting weak and mealy-mouthed and wishy-washy and spineless. Well, Brother Bill, how do you feel about it? <laughs> you see how I feel about it. You know, now, I, you know, physically, I may not be that intimidating to anybody as far as like taking them on and wrestling them to the mat. Okay. But 
in terms of spine concerning the name of Jesus, I'm not giving an inch, I'm not giving a millimeter. They can say what they will, I'll stare them straight in the face and tell them exactly what I think about them trying to stop me from speaking in the name of Jesus. Yeah, but Brother Bill, there are places you'd be killed for that. Well, A, I believe in supernatural uh, protection. So, you know, uh, matter of fact, I heard, this was a story I heard on Word of Faith Radio this past week. There was a preacher, I don't even remember who it was now, I've listened to all kinds of good Word of Faith teachers on Word of Faith Radio. So WFR.org, go there, praise God. So I'm listening to this, this uh, message, and they were talking about a church where they taught the authority of the name of Jesus, they taught supernatural protection in Jesus' name, and they taught that regularly. And the youth were outside in front of the church before church started, and they came into the service as the service was beginning to start to get their seats. And when they looked down to the front of the church, the pastor and his wife were down at the front of the church and there was a guy with a gun holding a gun on them, holding them up to get the money from the church. Well, the kids thought to themselves, this is a test. You know, they're teaching on the authority of the name of Jesus. This is a test. So we're just going to, we're going to pass this test. So they go running down the aisles going, you stop in the name of Jesus. Drop that gun. And the guy drops the gun and runs out of the church. <laughs> and the parents are like, what are you doing? They said, well, we thought you were just testing us. <laughs> well, it turns out it was the real thing. And the guy ran off. Well, praise God for the kids. Amen. Standing up on what they believed. Amen. But you notice what happened. The guy ran off. I mean, these kids didn't have guns. They weren't big, strong dudes coming in to take him out. They're just kids coming in going, you stop in the name of Jesus. And he drops the gun and runs out. See, the authority and the power of the name of Jesus will affect those that are driven by the wrong spirit. Affect anybody. But that's what happened in this case. Praise God. So, everything we do, we ought to be doing in the name of Jesus. And we ought to be operating in that name and respecting that name and believing in that name and standing for that name. And more and more and more, unfortunately, I'm seeing churches, I'm seeing organizations, I'm seeing Christians just kind of ease off. Now, I'll tell you something else. This is in the news. This is hot off the press news. This whole thing going on in Norway. They're already starting to talk about the fact that this guy was a Christian. And see, there's no difference between Christians and Muslims because they're all just wanting to kill people in, in the name of their God. That's already starting. You know, because everybody, when that terror attack happened, they just assumed, oh, it must be Al-Qaeda, it must be, you know, radical Muslims. Well, it turns out it was a radical nutcase that claims to be a Christian. Well, I can claim to be a Martian, but it doesn't make me one. Amen? You know, matter of fact, I don't think I do too well on Mars. The air is just a bit thin, <laughs> okay? But the thing is, I can claim to be, you know, from Vulcan. It doesn't matter. I don't have the ears. Okay? So the same thing. This guy may be claiming to be a Christian. He obviously wasn't one because when they asked him if he did it, he said, oh, yeah, I did it. Well, you know, God, what's the matter with you? Oh, it, nothing I did was wrong. He killed a whole bunch of kids. Shot them down. Nothing I did was wrong. Well, that tells you something right there. Okay? This guy was a loon. Might even be demon-possessed. I don't know. I'm not there to know. But the point is, the media is already getting a hold of that. And they already say, see, that's what we've been saying all along. Christians, just as bad as Muslims. It's religion. That's the problem. It's any kind of religion. we got to get rid of that. And so more and more pressure being brought to bear. Shut up, shut up, shut up. That's what they want us to do. I ain't shutting up. I'm on the Internet not shutting up. I'm on radio not shutting up. And I will continue to not shut up. <laughs> and be bold to speak in the name of Jesus. Amen? And that's what we got to be, and that's what we got to do. Praise God. Amen. Did you get anything out of this?
The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.